Joining me now is CBS News meteorologist and climate specialist Jeff Berardelli. We're also joined by Park Williams. He is a bioclimatologist at Columbia University's Lamont Doherty Earth Observatory. Park has done extensive research on fires and climate change. And Park, I'm wondering if you can tell our viewers, what does your research say about the relationship between climate change and fires? Uh, it, it says that the relationship is pretty straightforward as long as you have enough to burn. So in California's forests and throughout the forests of the rest of the West, uh, there's plenty to burn and so all you need is a spark and you need the fuel to be dry enough. And as temperatures have increased due to human caused climate change, then all else equal, the fuel is getting drier and drier. And so if it's not an extremely wet, we don't have an extremely wet winter, then uh, record breaking temperatures during the summertime really dry things out. And then all you need is a spark either from lightning or from people. And long story short, uh, forests are a lot more flammable in California and the rest of the West uh, today than they were 30 or 40 years ago because of a background warming trend. You know, Park, this is Jeff Berardelli here. Um, you know, um, one of the studies I find most interesting that you have done is the mega drought study, that this is one of the worst mega droughts California has seen in something like 1,200 years. Can you tell the viewers more about that? Yeah, that study was not looking or wasn't looking just at California. It was looking at all of the western United States and northern Mexico. And we used tree ring records as well as records of soil moisture in order to extend the record of Western North American soil moisture back for the last 1,200 years. And that allowed us to compare the drought conditions of the last couple decades that we all know that we've been seeing. We've seen uh, stream flow declining. We've seen uh, the large reservoirs decline in their storage, like Lake Mead. We've seen big bark beetle outbreaks. And of course, we've seen this, uh, this huge uh, eruption of wildfires over the last 20 years. And so the West has been in drought. We want to know how bad has this drought been compared to other multi-decade droughts that occurred over the last millennium. And we've known from tree ring records that there were these really awful droughts called mega droughts back in the medieval period. And these droughts have always looked like mutants to us in the tree ring record, and we feared uh, that something like this would return, but it hadn't until the last 20 years. And what we found is that over the last 20 years, soil moisture deficits, or the dryness of soil across the West, was about equal to the worst driest 20 year periods of the last millennium. And so these nightmare droughts have have begun to emerge. And so then we calculated how much of this recent drought is due to climate change and how much is due to just regular old bad luck. Of course, the mega droughts prove that you can have bad luck it just cause really bad droughts to occur. And we use climate modeling and climate observations and combined those two and found that the human caused warming trends account for about half of the drought severity over the last 20 years, meaning that if drought, if climate change hadn't occurred, then very likely we still would have experienced drought over the last 20 years or so, but the drought would have been about half as severe. And Park, uh, as you've been digging into these historical records that you're finding in tree rings and nature, there are some, of course, that say that fires are natural, it's all cyclical, and there is a political debate about controlled burns. I'm wondering if we can dig in a little bit into this and talk about the issue of fire and forest management. Is this really uh, something that is responsible, the mismanagement of these forests, like President Trump and Senator Mike Lee of Utah have claimed, for these tremendous fires that we're seeing out west. Fire is a fascinating thing because it is really uh, one of the ways that the atmosphere and the Earth's surface and humans all interact. And so, as I just said, if we look at the, uh, at the correlation between the area burned in the western U.S. forest, as well as California forest, and climate, then the relationship is very strong. The warmer years have more area burned, and over time, temperatures have warmed, and the area burned is increased as you'd expect based on this relationship. And so it's really hard to get around the, this correlation and the fact that warmer air is drier air. And so it logically makes sense as well that this correlation should look the way that it does. But there are a bunch of other things going on as well. About a century ago, we started getting very good at fighting fires. And when we got good at fighting fires, 
then we, what we ended up doing is putting out about 97% of the wildfires that occur across the West. Every time we successfully put out a fire, then we allow vegetation to continue growing that would have otherwise been killed and thinned out because of the fire. And so today it's true that, we, that some of our forested areas are artificially dense. There are more trees per acre than there would have been if we hadn't been fighting fire for the last century. However, when we look at the correlation between temperature and burned area, that hasn't changed over time. Temperature really statistically appears to be the dominant driver of the increase. Now, the more trees there are in the forest, then the more able forest fire is a, can, the more able forest fire is to respond to warming. If there was no forest, then warming wouldn't cause more forest fire. The more forest we have, then the more forest fire is able to respond to warming. So, Park, I just want to make sure that um, that we're all absolutely clear on your point there, which is that you do believe that there's a role for controlled burns and forest management, um, but that it's not necessarily in contradiction with understanding what's happening in terms of climate change. Is that right? That's right. I think that the, that mismanagement of forests has interacted with climate change. The more trees there are in the landscape, then the more that forest fire can respond to this to this drying effect of warming. So, you know, Park, you've been studying this for a really long time. Did you expect things to get this bad? I mean, this season has been historic this quickly, and do you feel like we're seeing an acceleration of climate change? I, I think that we're seeing an acceleration of forest fire because of climate change. Climate change has kind of been this train that's been moving for several decades now, and scientists decades before me were predicting that we'd start seeing big ramp-ups in forest fire. Uh, we saw ramp-ups from the 90s to the 80s. We saw ramp-ups from the first decade of the uh, 2000s compared to the 90s, and now this last decade has started to make the previous decade look like the fires were child's play. Um, I uh, began looking at this about 10 years ago, and I was predicting that fires were going to get worse. Uh, but scientists have been saying this for quite a while. The relationship between the aridity of the atmosphere and temperature is clear, and the relationship between fire and the aridity of the atmosphere is clear. And unfortunately, this relationship is exponential. This is why we hear firefighters every year saying that they're seeing fire behavior unlike anything they've seen in their entire career, is because as you warm the atmosphere, then forest fire responds non-linearly, meaning that every degree of warming actually causes more forest fire than the previous degree of warming. Park Williams, thank you for joining Jeff and me. Thank you.